So it's been a pretty busy couple of months. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had much time to finish off this studio, uh, which what I've liked to have done. But anyway, I got a couple of packages in the mail. Let's have a look at them. So how was your day? Well, <gasps> CPCB man. Mm. Oh, Dad, where'd you go? Sorry, um. <gasps> Jail CPCB man. man. Oh. <gasps> oh my stars! <laughs> oh, Jail CPCB man. Oh, Dad. Jail CPCB man. What? Jail. Jail CPCB man. Hi, this video is proudly sponsored by JLC PCB, who make all my PCBs. If you're looking for a very quick turnaround on a very high quality PCB, then I suggest checking them out. They can make two layer boards, four layer boards, six layer boards uh, of any size, really any size, and they can deliver within an astounding amount of time. So I highly recommend them. So since this mailbag is recorded over several days, uh, I'm just going to have to open up the packages as they arrive. So this first package is the latest update of the Pi projector. This is version 2.1. So let's uh, have a look at it. So this time I ordered a stencil. I was fairly confident with the design and it was all powering up without any issue. So I got a stencil and hopefully I won't have to have too many changes. So version 2.1, I've had a few changes in it. I've put a small notch in the front of the PCB, uh, so when you're running the LiPo battery, it can sit underneath and not stick out the, the front. I've also added in a jumper, which is roughly here. And what that does is it allows you to connect up to the DLP 2000 without having that top jumper. So you can desolder your power pin on the DLP 2000 and invert it around, then put a, a female header on this side and it'll just connect straight up, which would be nice, uh, and not have to have a jumper on the top. I've also added a header for an external thermistor, so if you want to be able to check on the battery and not charge it if it gets too hot, you can do so. There's also a couple of uh, problems with the previous version of the PCB. I had the DC jack connections around the wrong way, so I had to solder this uh, sort of bodge wire in by hand. Uh, of course, uh, version 2.1, I fixed that up. There's also a couple of other things. I inverted the logic on some of the signals, and so anyway, that's all been fixed up. So as I mentioned before, I've also ordered a stencil. So this time round, I got it in a frame uh, because one of my mates, Keen, has a proper frame uh, jig where you can actually attach it to it and just make uh, these in bulk. So considering I'll be making a lot of these by hand, at least for the first uh, 50 or 100, um, I've got to make this as efficient as possible. So having a, a non-framed stencil just makes life a lot harder. So when you're making PCBs like this up by hand, the most important thing is being able to reduce the amount of time that you spend on each individual bit of the process. Uh, the reason is two seconds here, five seconds there, 10 seconds there, it all adds up when you're doing 100 PCBs. And also you gotta make sure that you have a reliable process so you can repeat and test without uh, any failures. So, uh, that's going to be uh, another thing on my list of things to do, is to make up the next batch of Pi Projector PCBs. Okay, so later in the week, I got a couple more packages delivered. So, uh, these all came from Element 14. Let's crack them open. Okay, so these are some Weller tips for my uh, Weller soldering iron that I bought some time ago. I've only just managed to get around to ordering some of these tips. Got half a mil millimeter and 0.8 millimeters, uh, some 0.2. I suspect this, these other ones might be the same. Yeah, so I ordered a 1.2 millimeter 
bent tip. Anyway, uh, I needed a 1.2 mil and a 0.8 and a 0.4 mil um, soldering tip so I can actually do some surface mount uh, soldering. So the uh, soldering iron tip that comes with a unit is, is this massive tip, so of course I needed something smaller. Okay, so the next one. Ah, uh, nice. Okay, so I ordered a couple of semis. Occasionally Element 14 will have uh, some semiconductors and ICs that are on special. Uh, so I bought a bunch of them. One of them was fairly expensive, but it's certainly a lot cheaper than buying it before they were on special. Uh, so the first one um, is a CAN bus. This is a fairly cheap device, about $2.77 each. Uh, it's the MCP25625. Uh, the good thing about this is it contains an integrated transceiver. Um, operates off 10 megahertz SPI, which equates to 1 megabits per second. 2.7 to 5.5 volts uh, operating uh, voltage and it works off a 10 microamp quiescent current so it's pretty good and the really good thing is it's got a transceiver inbuilt so you don't need to worry about uh, any extra uh, sort of logic or any other chips uh, outside it so I've got two of these I might play around with um, CAN bus on my my car uh, so that's quite good so these are real-time clocks. These are the ones based on the MCP79400. Typical RTC that you find. It contains battery-backed SRAM, uh, operates off ITC. It's got 64-bit EEPROM, 1.8 volts to 5.5 volts operating range. But it's got a very low operating current, down to 1.2 microamps when you're running at 3.3 volts. So they're really nice actually, very, very low uh, operating current. Uh, so these are 10K digital pots, pretty straightforward. These ones are non-volatile, so when the power goes off and the power comes back on again, they will resume their wiper position. That's quite good. Um, ITC based, they have an internal uh, weak ITC pull-up, so you don't need to theoretically worry about ITC pull-ups, and they run off 2.7 to 5.5 volts, so they're, they're quite good. Uh, why did I get those? Well, I don't know. I don't know why I got those. thought they might come in handy uh, for some project I might have. And uh, these ones are the really nice ones. These ones are the ones that really were quite interesting. These are GMR angle sensors. GMR is giant magneto resistance. Um, so they're a GMR sensor. Uh, it's a TLE 5012BE1000FUMA1, apparently. So what do GMRs do? They detect the orientation of a magnetic field. Traditionally what you'd do is you'd have one of these placed on a circuit board somewhere. You'd have a small magnet that can rotate uh, and it detects an angle of rotation. These are really nice chips. They've got a little DSP inbuilt, uh, so they can detect up to 0 0.01 degrees, which is really nice. A full 360 rotation down to 0 0.01 degrees. More accuracy than you'd probably ever want. It runs off 3 volts to 5.5 volts, but uh, the downside, it uses an 8 megabit per second SSC interface, which is very similar to I2C, uh, but not quite. So I have to probably just bit bash more than likely. Um, in fact, I think there's some libraries around for bit bashing. What did I have in mind for this? Um, I was going to put these onto a pan tilt uh, camera housing. So when I'm filming, I'll be able to just point it into a position and uh, not have to manually do it. So that'd be nice. Uh, that's great. So what's next? Okay, so because they didn't have enough of them in stock at the time, uh, this is just the angle sensor, uh, some more angle sensors, uh, more pots, uh, what's this, CAN bus, and oh, and this one, these are our 24 key matrix touch sensor, uh, operating off a fairly slow ITC, only 100 kilohertz, runs off 1.8 to 5.5 volts with the 40 microamp operational current, which is pretty low. The only downside to these, it's running off an MLF package, which is a leadless package. They're a bit of a bugger to solder. I can work around that. I've got some fairly small soldering tips now, so that's quite good. So they'll be quite good uh, in my my Uber video editing desk that I'm making. Um, to have some uh, touch keys, which would be good. 
Okay, what next? Uh, what else have we got? Uh, more digital pots. Um, I got a bunch of 10K digital pots. Even more digital pots. Well, there you go, just uh, even more digital pots. And I got a bucket load of anti-static bags uh, because I'll be shortly uh, building out my Rev2 of the Pi projector board. And, oh, I need to find a Pi projector board. And so I'll be putting uh, the Pi projectors into anti-static bags. They're a little bit big, uh, probably a little bit too big than I'd hoped, uh, but I couldn't find anything uh, the right size, but that should be all right. Um, it'll keep uh, the Rev2 Pi projectors uh, nice and safe um, from anti-static, so that's good. So I got um, 400 of them. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to sell 400 um, Pi projectors, but uh, we'll see. See how it goes. Um, so I've got a. I'll be placing an order soon for uh, once these initial run of power projectors work out. I'll be placing an order for about uh, 200 of them. So I plan to make 200 of them in one big batch. I might even get a um, a local PCB pick and place uh, house to actually manufacture them for me. Uh, it'll be a lot more reliable that way and me sitting there doing it by hand is going to be painful <laughs> and I've got other things to do as well like make videos. Oh and this arrived. Nice! 200 PCBs of the Pi Projector version 1.3 so version 1.3, I've added a few extra things. I've put in address lines for the I2C expander. Uh, I've broken out a lot more of the, the GPIOs on this uh, sort of header at the end here. Put in some documentation on the PCB as well, so you know which way to solder the uh, address lines. And I've also added in a little jumper down here, which allows you to connect to the DLP2000 from underneath. So that's about the only changes I've made uh, for version 1.3. Uh, so I'll put these up on Tindy. Go get them. So I've got a, another couple of uh, packages delivered from Element 14. And these are all the uh, connectors that I ordered for all these 200 uh, high projector boards. So that's a problem with uh, making PCBs and selling them, uh, you end up having to buy a heck of a lot of uh, components and this is just a fairly basic board as well. These are the female headers for the uh, DLP2000 and I ordered a thousand of these and I think they sent 500 or something and there's a whole bunch on back order. I think these ones are also more connectors so these headers are just for the uh, power uh, connector on the Pi projector. Plenty to go around. So these are the uh, Pi headers. So I'll be adding these on as uh, something else that you can actually purchase when you're buying the uh, Pi projector. Uh, it just saves a lot of time having to dig around looking for headers and connectors. These are for the GPIOs, the breakout for the GPIOs. So, I think I've got it, pretty much everything and I'll have to put this up on the Tindy store now. So that's about it uh, for this week's mailbag. I was going to be running a weekly rant up again this week, uh, but unfortunately I ran out of time. Uh, so things are going to be going back to normal again on the Micmac channel. Uh, I'll be resuming my regular weekly roundups. I'll be uh, doing my reviews of SBCs, uh, the odd competition that will come up every so often. Uh, everything will be going back to normal um, now that I have a little bit more time on my hands. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week. JLC <gasps> PCB man! JLC PCB man! <gasps> <gasps> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm fighting <laughs> Oh my sauce!